Hello Booktube, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Bookers and Books. I have a tag for you today. It is the This or That book tag for People April. It is an original tag created by myself and by Roz from Scally Dandling About the Books. We are hosting People April, which is an event lasting all month long that is about life writing. So any non-fiction that is biography, autobiography, diaries, memoirs, anything like that. So any non-fiction where somebody's life is on the page. Um, the, the idea behind this tag is that we just want you to discuss what you like and don't like, your preferences, your opinions about this type of writing. So if you're tagged, or even if you're not tagged, everybody's tagged, everybody's tagged. So I tag everyone. I'm going to tag some more people more specifically at the end. I haven't prepared. Who am I going to tag? I'm going to think about it. Anyway, I'm going to tag some specific people, but uh, everyone's tagged. So if you want to do it, just do it. So let's start with that. Um, I, I would... I'm tired. I'm sorry. I've had a long day. I'm going to have a long week. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I was saying, oh yeah, we just want you to discuss uh, your preferences and your opinion. So feel free to skip prompt if you if, if it's not inspiring you. Uh, feel free to adapt a little bit the prompts or to interpret them like widely. Uh, we will use either biography or diary or memoir for the specific prompts, but feel free to interchange it and to consider that it's all the same. Um, so that if we ask a question about biography, that it's also worth, also valid for a memoir or for a diary or something. Uh, if it fits, so, so, so for some of the prompts it doesn't, it doesn't work, but for some prompts it does so feel free to, to consider the prompts in, in the way that you like um a, a little parenthesis before i jump to the prompts uh i want to thank everyone who commented on my previous video uh in my previous video i explained why i'm here and not in my regular decor in, la, in my regular place um i'm at my parents place and um yeah I, i'm my mother is not ill but she, she broke an arm and um given the age that my parents are they need a bit of help and i'm here to help and i would like to uh take this moment to say how much i admire all the booktubers who manage to have a family life like children and or parents and uh, a job and manage to do booktube at the same time because at the moment i don't know how that's possible so tonight i have the choice between filming this tag or reading a book <laughs> so i'm not reading I i'm making a video uh tomorrow i suppose i'm going to read a book uh but i'm behind on my group reads uh anyway anyway uh hopefully th things will um they, they they will even out at the end of the week or the month or something it th things are going to be fine so there's nothing absolutely serious so uh, anyway uh, and the situation is that i don't have a tripod so the, the phone is propped on a chair and i'm sitting on the floor hence the view towards the ceiling yeah but the interesting angle uh and the bad lighting there's just a big light on the ceiling and that's it anyway <laughs> anyway um so after three minutes of, uh, of of general talk and not getting to the point because i'm a bit tired let's jump into it let's go to the first question first prompt uh one big fat and detailed biographies or short and succinct biographies uh instinctively like the the, the uh snobbish me would like to say big fat biography but the reality is that i'm not interested in a big fat biography if i have not read something shorter before about that person if i don't already have the outline or at least if i don't know one part of that person's life i will probably be lost in all the details of the uh, in all the details of a big fat and detailed biography. So I'm going to vote for short and succinct biographies. If it's my first time reading about a person, I want it short. Uh, I want the gist of it. I want to know a little bit the arc of their life. Um, I, I don't want too much detail just to begin with. It doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the big fat biography once in a while, but in general, I'm going to start with a succinct one. Prompt number two, celebrity memoirs or average Joe memoirs. I'm going to vote for the average Joe. Um, if, if the average Joe is talking about something interesting, because if the average Joe is just talking about their average life, I, I, I'm not that interested. But 
Um, the problem with celebrity memoirs is that very often celebrities are given book deals whether they have something interesting to say or not. Uh, for the average Joe, chances are if they have a book deal, they have something interesting to say, or they are already good writers and they can, even if they have nothing interesting to say, they can say it well. So the chances are that it's going to be a better book if it's an average Joe memoir, I think. Uh, if it's not, if it's self-published, of course, the, the, what I just said about publishers giving book deals, it does not apply. But, um, but, but I think in general, average Joe memoirs are a bit more interesting and they offer more variety than the celebrity memoirs and they are more honest yeah uh, perhaps that, that that is also a factor more honest um yeah the last celebrity memoir I no it's not the last the second to last well anyway one that i tried to read was spare by prince harry and that was not honest and that was terrible so i, I read 50 pages of it i'm judging the book without having read, read it completely but it was rubbish. <laughs> I can say that after 50 pages, it was rubbish. Anyway, uh, prompt number three, complete correspondence or selected letters. I'm going to go for selected letters once again, because if I go for the uh, complete correspondence, there's going to be a lot of weed in that like a lot of uh it's not going to be all flowers and a pretty pretty garden it's going to be a lot of bad stuff in there and boring stuff now i'm sure that it's very useful for people who do research um for somebody who wants to write a biography i'm sh i'm sure it's super useful to have a volume of the complete select complete letters of so and so uh however for just just for me for to read them from page one to the last selected letters thank you very much uh, number four, memoirs written when the events are fresh or memoirs written with hindsight. Hindsight, please, please put a bit of distance between your writing and whatever is the object you're writing about. Uh, because, yeah, to, to write a good memoir, you need the hindsight, you need the distance, you need to have a certain detachment is that a word in english detachment uh, a certain a certain distance from whatever you're talking about otherwise it's just raw feelings and raw impressions it, it, it's not worthless it has value but i think it has value in a diary it doesn't have as much value in a memoir in a memoir i want a bit of analysis i want a bit of retrospect uh, or introspect or something like you, you look back on things uh and if if you write your memoir just right after the things happened I don't know. I, I, I don't know how. how yeah, I, I prefer. I, it could be good. It doesn't mean it's not good. Like for everything, it could be good. Depends on the way it's done. But it's, yeah, with hindsight, I prefer an old man's memoir to a young man's memoir. Um, well, yeah, in general. Um, then uh, number five, <laughs> gossipy biographies or scholarly biographies. Oh gossipy. <laughs> I like a good gossip. That being said, I don't mean gossipy in the sense that there's no sources and somebody's just inventing stuff about the person. No, no, no. It has to be well researched. It has to be backed up with a bunch of things. But what I mean by gossipy biography, as opposed to the scholarly one, the, the, I suppose the scholarly can also focus on the person's private life. But I, I even if the, the biography is um, somebody who is famous for, I don't know, the, it, let's say it's an artist and they have created these works of art either it's uh, writing books or paintings or whatever it is that they have created um the 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 scholarly biography will focus a lot on their work. Uh, same thing if it's a politician or a historical figure, they will focus on the impact that they had and the, their importance in the society of their time and things like that, which is very interesting. But I also want to know about their private lives because that is often where you see the true nature of somebody. Um, I'm going to give you an example. There's uh, Georges Clemenceau, who was um, not president, but he was because uh, I, I, the, the structure of France in, in during World War One. I, I, I forget what it was exactly, but basically he was to France during World War One. Well, at the end of it, uh, what uh, Winston Churchill was to Britain during World War Two. So the moral leader and the political leader. Uh, but Clemenceau, in his private life, was horrible. He married an American woman. They had a child. And a few years later, he decided that he did not like his American wife anymore. He just sent her back to the United States with not a single penny. And the laws were such that he could prevent her from seeing their, their child. And he did that. The woman never saw her son again. And he did not have any good reason to send her away, except that he was tired of her and wanted to go with his mistress. 
just really really not the, the nicest person on earth and does it change what he did politically for france during world war one no but nevertheless if if the biography does not talk about that particular aspect of his life something is missing so yeah and and, and it's the thing that i remember see i don't remember his specific title during world war one was he president i think he was president i think he was president of the council or something you call it like prime minister Maybe I don't I don't even know what his title was, but I remember that he was a jerk to his wife. So that's why I like the gossipy biographies. I remember them. <laughs> I remember the gossip. Um, and then prompt number six, diaries of ordinary life or diaries of extraordinary events. Um, now, diaries are written day to day. So I understand that day to day you cannot have something extraordinary, but I really hope that it covers, on the whole, an extraordinary period. Um, so a, a diary of, I don't know, not, not that they, they are published generally, but a diary of a girl growing up. Is there anything more boring than that? Um, the only reason the diary of Anne Frank is interesting is that she wrote it in these extraordinary circumstances, um, hiding from the Nazis and trying to survive uh, with a whole bunch of people crammed into a small apartment, trying not to make any noise, never going outside, never going to school. So th th that's the reason why the diary is interesting. Otherwise, I'm not sure it would be interesting. Um, same thing for any diary, basically. Um, there will be another prompt about a diary later and it, I guess I'm going to it, it's going to uh, enlighten a little bit <laughs> my answer on this uh, prop number seven RT memoirs or sporting memoirs um, I, I had to ask myself the question I suppose intellectual me would love to answer well RT memoirs of course I don't care for sports but it's not true um, memoirs um, in fact I, I have a prop with me um, the first grown-up non-fiction that I read, so the first book of non-fiction that was written for adults that I read was a an autobiography of a hockey player. It was the autobiography of Wayne Gretzky. It belonged to my brother. And of course, uh, during the time, it was the end of the 1980s, early 1990s. Um, if your brother loved Wayne Gretzky, as a little sister, you had to love Mario Lemieux. <laughs> and that is basically the second grown-up non-fiction that I read. And then I went to the library and I read a whole bunch of biographies of hockey players. Uh, Ken Dryden, uh, Vyacheslav Tretiak. Um, there, were, there were books about... Um, they were not necessarily autobiographies, but they the, uh, the were biographies of uh, Guy Lafleur and Maurice Richard and just a whole bunch of hockey players. And that is how I started reading non-fiction. And now, now that I'm an adult, like this, this, this is from from um, 1993. So we are going back, way back. Uh, so 31 years ago. So I was a teenager when I read this. Um, and, and now that I'm a grown up, have my taste changed? Not so much, <laughs> because last year I read the two memoirs by um, the, the, the um, oh, what's his name? The equipment manager of the Montreal Canadiens. It was all gossip, so back to the previous question, gossipy, biography, or uh, scholarly. Uh, I like the gossipy memoir too. Um, and, well, it's not super gossipy, but th there was a little tidbits of behind the scenes, like who's a nice, who's a nice guy and who's not a nice guy, and uh, yeah, who, 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 who's a, a penny pincher, like they're all millionaires, these hockey players, but who's a penny pincher and who's super generous, uh, and things like that. It, it, was, it, it was fun to see behind the scenes. So, I have to say sporting biographies, sporting memoirs, um, though not not any sport. Um, for If it was a biography or a memoir, the, 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 the precise prompt is about memoirs. So if it was a memoir of a cricket player, chances are I would not be interested because I know nothing about cricket, not even the basic rules. Uh, but if it was the memoir of a painter that I didn't know or a uh, dancer that I didn't know, well, I know a bit about painting and I know a bit about dancing. So chances are I would find that particular memoir more interesting. But if I already know a little bit the person or the, the context, chances are a good sports memoir will be more to my taste. Sometimes I surprise myself. It's fun. The, these tags, they, 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 they make me ask myself questions I wouldn't ask otherwise. Um, so prop number eight, 
gritty autobiographical writing or inspirational autobiographical writing? Um, I'm going to go for the gritty because inspirational. If it is deliberately made to be in inspirational, I find it manipulative and I just don't like it. Um, I, I, I'm a little rabbit, I eat grass, I live on the ground floor, I don't need to fly and I don't need anyone to convince me that I can fly if you just want it or if you just try hard enough or if you just put yourself in the hands of faith or fate or faith or both or anyway. It, I don't want that. I'm a little rabbit and I'm eating the grass. I'm happy with that. So gritty, I suppose gritty is better. It's not necessarily that I would go towards that necessarily. Uh, but yeah, uh, as, a, as a rabbit, I would like the, the, the autobiography of a fellow rabbit who survived the clutches of a, of, uh, a fox, uh, who survives, I don't know, hunters, who survived a whole bunch of things. Yeah, sure, I'll go for that. Gritty. Uh, prop number nine. Biographies of historical figures or biographies of contemporary figures. Now for that, that one's easy. Historical figures. Uh, for the simple reason that for contemporary figures, the story is not over. We still don't know everything. The person is still alive. Uh, or even if the person died not a long time ago, like five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, the history of that person is still not written. The consequences of whatever that person did is not written. Chances are there's a bunch of archives that are still not publicly accessible. So the farther we delve into the past, the more complete the picture is. So I'm going to vote for uh, historical figures, biographies of historical figures. Uh, prop number 10, memoirs of happy days or memoirs of tragic days. <laughs> tragic days. I vote for tragic days. Um, I love a good memoir about a tragedy. It, it, it sounds a bit horrible to say that, but it's nevertheless the truth. Um, I do like memoirs about World War II, whether it's uh, surviving concentration camps or surviving whatever happened in, to your particular country. So whether it was the occupation in France or uh, a different type of occupation in Poland or um, the, the bombing of London or I've, I don't care, something on, on the Eastern Front. Um, th th these ones are, are, are something too. Um, I read the, um, the diary. Is it a diary? Is it a diary or a memoir? I think it's a diary of uh, von Kagenek, I think that's his name. Um, he was a, a simple soldier in the Wehrmacht on the uh, Eastern Front. And yeah, it's, it, it's about tragic events. It's a different side of the coin, but it's tra tragic events. Um, so I, I prefer tragic days to happy days. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, Tolstoy who said that uh, happy families don't have a story, but uh, unhappy families are all unhappy in their own way. I think it's a bit the same. Happy memoirs of happy days. They're nice, but not as interesting as tragedy. Gosh, I, I feel bloodthirsty. <laughs> uh, I'm tired. Okay, sorry about that. Um, prompt number 10. Uh, no, I, I've said prompt number 10. I, I'm repeating. I'm tired. I'm sorry about that. Bonus prompt now. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I, it's a bit nerdy, but I thought it was fun. So, uh, the, the, the last this or that, the complete diary of Samuel Pepys or selections from the diary of Samuel Pepys. And the complete diary is over 4,000 pages and there is an audiobook of it on Naxos that, that I found. It is 116 hours and 16 minutes. And Naxos also has a selected uh, selections from the uh, from diary, from the diary of Samuel Pepys, an audiobook of selections from the diary of Samuel Pepys. And that audiobook is three hours and 55 minutes. That is approximately 120 pages. Uh, so I checked for other versions of the selections of the uh, Diary of Samuel Pepys. Uh, some of them are 400 pages. Um, I found the Everyman Library was at 700 pages and the Penguin, Classic Penguin, was at over 1,000 pages. So even if it's selections from the diary, it covers quite a lot of ground. And my answer to that is selections because 4,000 pages of somebody else's life and um, not every day is going to be interesting. Now, of course, Pepys did live through interesting parts of, he lived in London, so of London's history um, and England's history at the time. So he was a witness to very interesting things. However, not every day was super fascinating and I I don't want to, 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 
waste. Can I say that? I don't want to spend so much time reading about every teeny tiny detail of the diary of Samuel Pepys. That's his life. I want to live my life. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that, that's the uh, that that's the last prompt. Uh, so who am I going to tag? Oh, I, I, I just give me a second. I while editing, I noticed that Roz had published her video and she has tagged a whole bunch of people. So the people that I tagged in my video, it doesn't count anymore. They have already been tagged. So I'm not going to tag anyone except, except Steve Donahue. Yes, you are double tagged, Steve, because you've been such a wonderful supporter of people. April, you deserve to be tagged twice. Uh, so, uh, so that's it for the tags and then back to the rest of what I said in like, five minutes ago. <laughs> and um, thank you everyone for watching. Oh, and I wanted to say to everyone who commented on my previous video, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to answer as soon as I can. And um, yeah, your, your words of support mean a lot to me. So thank you everyone who commented on my previous video where I explained a bit this situation. Um, and yeah, I, I already don't remember what I said at the beginning of this video, so I don't remember if I explained the reason why I'm here. Um, so I'm filming. This is my childhood bedroom. And um, yeah, I'm going to be here for a few days. I don't know how long. Uh, yeah, I have my, my computer for work and I'm, I'm teleworking anyway. So uh, a bit a bit more distance from the office doesn't make a lot of difference anyway. So uh, anyway, anyway, uh, so I've talked long enough. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!